So, I am going to a pool party today, and on my way to the pool, uh, I realized that that amazing, like, off the beaten path, hole in the wall thrift store was on the way there, and I'm gonna be late to the event. Uh, because I'm gonna go in. Uh, last time I found some amazing vintage pieces, a lot of like vintage hosiery, and the prices were uh, dirtest of cheap. So let's go see what I can find, and I am so excited. So just like last time, remember, it's just a collection of random buildings that they have stuff in. So uh, it's, it's very much a look at a treasure hunt kind of deal. So I found this cute quilted toilet paper roll holder, uh, but you can see that the structure inside had become unattached, so it created this little pointy end that I didn't really like. So I decided to go ahead and leave it behind, but it was very cute. My basket already has some things in it, and then I found, I guess, the kids' room. This is like a house that had been converted into a thrift store, so they put all of the kid-oriented and toy stuff in one room. Roller skates! Roller skates! Roller skates! I found roller skates! So I found this pair of vintage roller derby roller skates. No, they're not actually for roller derby. The brand name is Roller Derby. Uh, and at only $5, yeah, these are definitely coming home with me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And it's not a video with me unless I go look at the mugs. This was a very cute milk glass mug. It had a very interesting pattern on it, but I decided to leave it behind because I couldn't find the maker. It's probably glass bake or something like that. But then I saw this vintage 80s hummingbird mug at 50 cents. This is definitely coming with me. I'm trying to figure out where to put this because as you can see, my basket is getting full and I found these awesome boomerang ashtrays. I'm trying to show you the maker's mark, and there we go. Good job, camera. You finally focused. I appreciate you for cooperating. These were both made in Sweden, and at $2 a piece, they are definitely coming with me. Look, there are my roller skates. I'm so excited about roller skates. You just, oh, I'm so excited. This poor piece of Pyrex. I mean, I'm going to pick it up for 99 cents, but it's seen rough days. I'm going to have to do some research on this particular piece of milk glass. I can't tell if this is anchor hawking or if this is glass bake, but it's very cool. And then there's that Pyrex piece I picked up just a minute ago and a new old stock bunt pan. I'm going to have to do some research on that too. But like I said, the prices here are dirt cheap. So if you're going to pay to learn, do it when it's cheap. Okay. Um, I missed the clothes uh, in there because I got distracted by all of the ceramics and the Pyrex that I found. Um, so what I'm gonna do is to help prevent crazing. If you don't know what crazing is, it's like that crackling that you get in the glaze. And um, it's like 100 degrees outside right now. So I actually have a cooler that I keep in my car specifically for that. Cause again, I'm going to an event. So uh, I'm gonna put all the ceramics into this and then go look at some clothes. <laughs> Uh, I actually only spent, um, I spent less than $20 and it took me 20 minutes. Big excite. So I found a pair of Jerry shorts. This is an outdoor brand. Unfortunately, as per outdoor brands sometimes do, it has a giant hole in it, so I left it behind. I am checking tags to see the brands. I am giving you this amazing close-up of this blue gingham print because I'm looking at the clothes and not looking in my viewfinder, so sorry about that. I found a pair of vintage 90s Levi Strauss shorts. It is a nice relaxed fit, straight leg, nice eight inch inseam. So these are definitely going with me at $2 for the pair. And here's the Kingdom pairs. I got distracted by the Pillsbury Doughboy up here, this tote bag. If it was a dollar, I would have took it home with me, but it was, they were selling it for five. So I left it behind. Uh, I'm checking these cargo shorts, these camo cargo shorts, to see if they are Amacarby and Fitch. They are not. I have never heard of that brand. I probably should have looked it up, but I didn't have cell service in here, or I would have. Um, the zipper works great. I still didn't pick them up, so I don't know why I felt the need to do that. I guess I'm just trying to think about, do I want to take a chance? I decided no. I left it behind. Here I'm trying to find the brand. This is a pair of L.L. Bean swim trunks. Uh, I'm checking inside to see if they are vintage. 
I think they are vintage, but they're not made in the USA vintage, so I just decided to go ahead and leave it behind. This is the clothing prices. They are the dirtest of cheap, and yes, buy one, get one free clothes. Uh, now that I'm fully glistening, uh, I did go back in and look at the clothes. I didn't find very much because I was trying to be quick about it. I need to go to my event now. I'm very late. Um, but I'll show you here in uh, the power of editing what I got. Hello, so it is the next day and I'm going to do the haul portion now for this whole mall thrift store. So this thrift store is a, uh, a faith-based charity shop. Uh, it's there, it's to help fund their mission trips, which I didn't realize the first time I went there, but there is a big sign that tells you about it and then there's like signs all over the place. But the last time I went there, there was like two people working, whereas this time it was very busy. So there were a lot of people there, uh, both shopping and also working or volunteering in the case because this is a faith-based charity shop. So let's go ahead and get into it. I hope you guys have a snack and or a tasty beverage of your choice because this is going to be a long one. So we're gonna start with one of my most excited finds and it's, it's only because personal. So I've talked about it before. The only thing that I really feel like I have much expertise is, is Adidas, uh, vintage books, pre-barcode, and roller skates. So when I saw a pair of roller skates for $5, in decent shape uh, i was very excited about this and when i say decent shape yes it's got scuffing on the front because that's going to happen when you fall down uh, if you don't put toe guards on it but all the bushings are in good shape um the bearings do need to be cleaned they are dirty but i don't mind doing that because uh, it's very satisfying for me so i'll do some basic uh skate care and these sell for like 20 and you're like why are you going to do all that effort for a pair of $20 roller skates, it's because I love roller skates. And to have a nice vintage pair of skates to continue on rolling uh, brings me a lot of joy. So there are those, these are the Roller Derby brand. No, these are not Roller Derby skates. Uh, these are figure skating skates or jam skates if you made smaller wheels. I could make a video about differentiating the difference between roller derby skates like for actually playing roller derby roller derby branded skates which is what these are which are not for roller derby well they technically are for roller derby but when roller derby was like speed skating and not the full contact sport that it is now so again expertise in roller skates and roller derby books and Adidas, but before I geek out too hard about that, I'm just gonna set them aside. $20, $5 into an easy 20 plus shipping, so. And I went back in there to look at clothing. I'm glad I did. Um, I didn't get to look very hard at clothing because again, I did have an event that I had to go to. But I found two vintage hats. I love selling vintage hats. Now this one does have some wear in the uh, felted wool. It has a couple of spots here, a couple of spots here. Chances are that's where uh, Moths decided to do a little nom. But this is, both of these were $6. But the reason I bought them is because they're vintage. So this one is made in West Germany. So that means it's before 1991. I'm pretty sure that's when the Berlin Wall fell. Here I am with my history degree, not remembering exactly. It's 89 or 91. I can't remember which of the two two years it was. I'll put it over here, which one it is. So these are made uh, Knox, New York, and this one is Danafelt. And uh, an interesting thing to note when you're trying to do vintage hats is that there's normally a tag in here that tells you what size it is. If it is a true vintage hat, chances are it is completely gone. So this is where the size would have been underneath the brim. So I'm going to have to measure this. My head is a seven and three quarters size hat. So this does not fit me. So that means this is probably a seven and a quarter or a full seven. I'm sure these were donated by the same person. Yep. I feel like this is a full seven. But these are really, really cool. They're very soft, well-made men's hats. I'm guessing by the styling, this is probably 
like early 80s by my guess but here are the hats I got two video games uh, they're not worth a whole lot but I didn't pay a whole lot for them and they're just gonna be quick things I can put up in my store and then sell so this is South Park Stick of Truth uh, PS3 game I paid two dollars for this and then I paid a dollar for roller coaster tycoon number three so again I'm just gonna double my money on these and they're gonna go out the door probably pretty quickly because I'm going to price them competitively. And then we have some vintage clothing. I found a pair of vintage Levi's Strauss. So a pair of vintage Levi's, the relax fit. So these are from the 90s. This is a size 34 with an eight inch inseam. So just a basic pair of 90s Levi's. And then I found a Tommy Bahama polo. This is a, a size large and it's just a basic cotton polo with a pocket. The reason I picked those up is you saw how dirt cheap clothes are in there. That's why I, I wish I could have spent more time in there because of the fact that the clothes is, it's basically like fill a bag prices at that thrift store. Um, I'm guessing because they get a lot of clothing donations. And I guess let's get into the glass and ceramics now. So this Pyrex bowl has seen many better days. It has some dishwasher wear. It also has a lot of um, silverware scratching. That's what all of this gray is. That's what makes it look sturdy. This pattern is Colonial Mist. I know things, I'm so proud of myself. This is one of the um, nesting bowls. Uh, I only paid two dollars. No, I paid a dollar for this. So it is worth more than a dollar. It is not worth much more than a dollar. It's worth like maybe ten dollars for someone trying to complete their set. So there is that. I will get that cleaned up. I don't know how much I can get it cleaned up, but I'm going to attempt to clean it up. I got saw this and saw that it was new old stock. So someone got this for a gift and then never used it. This is Nordic ware made in the USA. Um, this is like a perfect example of like late 70s, early 80s kitchenware. Uh, again, new old stock and it was made in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's aluminum or aluminum depending on what side of the pond you're on. But look at the designs on it. This is honestly why I got it. Somebody's like cottagecore kitchen would love this. But I paid $3 for this. Uh, I'm going to put comps up over here because I have no idea how much this is worth. This is just a gut check for me, which is why I bought it. It does have somewhere on the bottom from where it was like moved in someone's cabinets for a long time. I'm guessing always moved, never used. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, I want to save like the thing I'm most excited about for last. Which I know is going to surprise all y'all that this is not the thing I'm most excited about. This is uh, oven proof. So this is Anchor Hawking. But look at this. I'm pretty sure this is Anchor Hawking because it says oven proof on the bottom. But it's no chips or cracks. But it's got a cow and a chicken on it. Look how cute that is. And it has its top. And I figured for $2, somebody's gonna want this and they're gonna pay me like 15 to $20 for it. I'm gonna put comps over here to see if I'm accurate in that assumption. Because again, uh, I like saving things from being smashed and trashed. So that is why I buy a lot of this stuff. Very excited about that. Uh, and then let's get into ceramics. So as you guys saw, I did put my ceramics in this cooler bag. Um, I do recommend that if you're someone who wants to get into ceramics or get into selling antique and vintage books, that you get some kind of cooler to put in your car to keep the, the paper from curling. Uh, I, I saw that Matt from Thrift to Life also recommends that, which awesome. You should check out his channel. But uh, in one of his latest videos, I'll put a link to his video up here just so you guys can see it. Um, but I also do it for ceramics um, to help prevent with crazing, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, crazing does not make something worthless. It's just some collectors do like the crazing because they think it shows age and like wear and they like the way it looks, just like some people like patina on metal. Um, and some people don't like it because they want a pristine item. 
So I just try to make sure it doesn't get any more crazed by keeping my ceramics when I'm out in the hot sun um, from doing any more crazing. So I found this for a dollar. This is a vintage mid-century piece made in Japan. You know, just the basic kitschy housewife thing. Um, but I paid a dollar for it. I figured somebody's gonna love it. It's got a lovely gold trim around like you do and then a transfer wear print pair of fruit. If you want to know how you can tell if it's transfer wear or not, I'm going to see if I can get really close here so you guys can see. If you look at the graphic, you can see how the graphic is dotted um, versus seeing brush strokes. So that is how you can tell it is a transfer print versus hand painted. And this next thing I got because uh, it made me laugh and because I know that this is probably a hand thrown uh, mug. Of course, I can't go a thing without saying a mug. I can't go thrifting without trying to find a mug. So this is, <laughs> this is piping hot and it's got bagpipes on it and I thought that was hilarious. Um, I also only paid a dollar for this. Somebody will want this. I just thought that was hilarious. And then, let's see here. I also found another mug. Um, these kind of vintage 80 mugs I sell all the time, especially if it has an animal on it that I know people obsess over. If you've ever been on TikTok, you know that there are people that literally just like wear ridiculous outfits and attach a hummingbird feeder on it just so they can get close to hummingbirds. So this was 50 cents as you see. And I know that this vintage 80s mug will go to a new home eventually. And then I found this beautiful, is this a charger? I'm not sure. Um, no, it's a little bit short of charger size. If you don't know what, the, what I'm talking about for a charger, uh, a charger is a plate that is 14 inches in one way or another. It's 14 inches across. Or larger that's what a charger is I think this is probably like 13 it might be at the 14 if it is at 14 then I will call it a charger if it's not at 14 then it's just a large serving dish but this is a piece of made in the USA all of the gold trim is 22 karat gold I think that's what it says yes and the pattern is called English rose it has this lovely scalloping on the side here or ruffling I don't know what you want to call that but I thought for 59 cents somebody will want this for entertaining or tea of some set uh, and then I'm going to show you the things that I'm most excited about because it's the thing that I think I'm just going to give me the biggest return on my investment and it is also the smallest thing so I paid two dollars for these and you're like but Bob it's just a random bent piece of metal you are not wrong this however shape is called a boomerang you're focusing on my face mustache <laughs> this is boomerang so whenever you see something in this shape this is called a boomerang shape this is predominant for the mid-century modern uh, decorating and styling. Uh, this is an ashtray. So this has a cigarette side and a cigar side. Um, but this is a Swedish stainless steel boomerang ashtray. And I have two of them. I paid $2 for them. The last boomerang ashtray I sold was made out of plastic or melamine, which is I think a type of plastic. Uh, and that sold for $20. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can get $20 a piece for these. But yeah, and there's currently none up for sale. Well, that's not true. There is a lot of stainless steel ashtrays up for sale with one of these in that lot but it's um, being sold overseas and I don't think they know what these are um, other than it's an ashtray and stainless steel. So this is, these are great mid-century modern pieces. 
Um, and while I know that uh, big tobacco has seen a massive decline in the last couple decades, uh, Mary Jane has not. So there are still people that are going to want something like this. But that's everything from this haul. I have a lot of cleaning uh, and listing to do. And I'm very excited about, about this place. I'm, I'm so excited that it, that I got to go to it again. Um, and that definitely makes me very excited to take the long journey back. It's about 45 minutes from my house, so it's quite the trip. But if I get stuff like this every time I go, definitely worth it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and until I see you guys again. Hi. Hero, 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 hero. I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.